networks may be higher and for mobiles will be considerably more. Text your answer A, B or C to 63303. Text cost £1 plus one standard network rate message. Red button viewers can enter by pressing their red button now or enter for free at ITV.com. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 10 a.m. on Monday the 30th of May and entries made after this time won't be counted but may still be charged. Best of luck. Now, our next guest has packed quite a lot into her 20 years. A budding actress, she got the break all hopefuls dream of by landing a part in the Harry Potter movies. And it wasn't just any old role she was cast in. She was given the rather enviable role of sweet and adorable Ginny Weasley, the girl who goes on to steal the heart of the world's most famous boy wizard. It seems silly, doesn't it, a wedding, given everything that's going on? Maybe that's the best reason to have it. Because of everything that's going on. Morning. Please welcome Bonnie Wright. the show body lovely Thank lovely you. to see we saw you there um kissing harry potter yeah. was that was that a little bit embarrassing because obviously you you you've been in all the films so you've got to know dan really well was it a bit awkward or how, how was it it actually kind of worked the other way around i think when you know someone for so long and you can kind of joke about it and have fun it's not like you're going on set with a complete stranger which you suddenly have to kiss so it was nice and yeah we just Got on with it. With it, I guess. So what's the, what's the easier though? Because you know, there's a lot of special effects. Obviously, in the film, I think they call them CGI. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is it easier to do something like that? You know, like a love scene, a little kiss, or is it is it easier to do the stuff where you've got nothing behind you? Um, I think you can lose yourself a bit more when it's a bit more kind of realistic, when there's an actual set around you and you're just working off someone else. It's much easier, where sometimes when we do do massive special effects things, there's all these dots that you have to be following. It sometimes yeah. gets a bit confusing and you're sort of like, where am I? This is bizarre where I am, but yeah. You've been in all the films and over the last 11 years. When you started out, had you any idea that you would, you know, go down this road and they'd be such a huge success? Definitely not. I think if we all knew at the beginning, it'd be interesting if everyone would say yes to the whole um, mm. 10 years. But no, I mean, when we started, they definitely were doing the first two films, but then they were going to just see how it went. And how old were you then? I was nine. When I got <gasps> wow. Oh. Yeah, very little. Cool. Do you kind of get worried because you, you're 20 now, aren't yeah. you? Do you worry now about moving on from the Harry Potter, being able to, to, to move that character aside and be accepted as an... Because you're only 20, yeah. so it's almost like you've got to start again now. Yeah, definitely. I think, although for me, which has been quite lucky, is though my character did very much develop, I've never... I feel like I won't necessarily be maybe as typecast mm. as for Dan, Rupert and Emma. Mm. So, no, I think, you know... Mm. I guess it's just how willing you are to really challenge yourself to, mm. you know, play different roles. And I'm starting a new film that I'm off in three weeks to begin, which um, is very different to Harry Potter. So. That's in yeah. Indonesia, isn't it? Are you yeah, filming I'm off in, in Indonesia, yes. So and you what are you going to play? I'm playing... Um, it's set in an international school in Jakarta, and it's about this philosophy classroom, and it's sort of... T the film takes this amazing turn that it kind of becomes this psychological thriller. So the character I'm playing is very outgoing and she's quite fashion forward and quite cool in the classroom, but she's very outspoken, so I'm quite excited about that because Ginny was always quite quiet mm -hmm. and sort of... Yeah. So and you're playing a lead in this one as well. That must be quite exciting for Yeah, it would be really exciting. And, um, yeah, there's about... Well, it's, again, it is set in a school, but a very yeah. different environment, so there'll be about... 19 other people sort of my age from all around the world so it'd be interesting and you talk about it. you know the, the character is a little bit more fashionable you're edgy apparently <laughs> what, what's this you won an award recently for yeah i don't know whether you take most edgy look as a good or a bad no, thing, it's a, it's it's a good thing. thing. <laughs> but yeah no it was good fun i think um yeah i'd never it was a beauty award i think yeah, yeah. rodale beauty award and uh, yeah no it's good fun you won the most edgy look of 2011 yeah. it's not bad <laughs> yeah not bad <laughs> now um, you're, you're doing something else that's fairly un unusual at the moment. Tell us a little bit about Surviving on a Pound a Day. How, yeah, how do you it's, that? Um, How'd that come about? It's a charity called Live Below the Line, which is a challenge. It's um, one of four campaigns that Global Poverty Project sort of head. 
and I'm working as well with Restless Development Charity. And it's basically, it was in May, but it kind of continues through the month of May, and what happens is for five days you live on a pound a day, which is what sort of the 1.4 billion population in extreme poverty, that's their sort of quota per day, mm -hmm. which is, I think, $1.25, I think. And so, yes, as... It was a week between the beginning of May and sort of a lot of people got involved and we tried to get you know, as many of the public to become you know, involved. And you know, it's really hard for anyone to really put themselves in a situation mm. and feel like is what it is Just for like, feeding yourself, though. It's not, it's not everything. It's not renting yeah, everything. That's it's just, for, yeah. you know, for... So what was your diet on was a it? pound a day? Yeah, it was interesting, actually. It was kind of... Um, when you think about how expensive the things we do eat, like we eat, as a society we eat so much, you know, meat and protein and vegetables that people just don't generally kind of have the access to. So it was very much quite like a grainy rice, lentils, bit of vegetables, very simple. But it did just make you realise how quickly we can make decisions in the day, like, oh, I'll just go grab a sandwich. Sure. Whereas mm. this was really like the amount of forward thinking I had to do and confusion well, at the supermarket. Well, you tempted to go down the junk food route because there's, there's obviously there's a lot of um, high street... I suppose you could call it fast food joints, where you, you could get what's called a meal for... Well, not three a, meals a day, though. No, maybe not three meals, food, yeah. Aren't you? Rather than just, you know, you could have one day where you, you could have that. But you seem to have stuck to the, the, the healthy week. It's true, you could. Um, like a friend of mine who I was doing it with, like some days she just was working so much in the day that she couldn't organise it. So right. you could just go and get, you know, a packet of... I don't know, ice buns from Tesco's for 50p, but then mm. once you've eaten that, you'd feel pretty sick. And I think the <laughs> yeah. other thing about living on a pound a day is that we all throw so much food away. Yeah. And when, you, when you're just, you've only got a pound, yeah, you, do you suddenly, eat everything. Yeah, yeah, you? and count the pennies. And, and it is, I mean, obviously it did make me like rethink in the sense that how we eat and how our culture's, you know, mm. we're so lucky. But at the same time, it can't really put you in the real situation of, course, of what it's yeah. like. So, but you know, it's. I think for me, I just I learned so much, and that was the reason why I sort of wanted to spread it. Just, I think people's mm. knowledge is not as broad as probably everyone wants. Well, Bonnie, fair play to you for, for taking part in it, and good luck with uh, with the is it the last Harry Potter film that we've got. How many have we got left to do now? Yeah, one last one. One to come last out. one yeah. to do, isn't it? Because I've I've seen the the last one that was at the yeah. cinema. It's really rather good. <laughs> <laughs> That's Bonnie Wright, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thank you. For another break, before we ask, uh, before we ask, before we go, uh, should all women who've had a nip and tuck fess up to going under the knife? We are going to be checking behind each other's ears during the break. See you in a bit. <laughs> On the loose with Ismi.com, fashion and home for who you are now.